Welcome to my cluttered workbench. I just thought I would make a short video today where I try to um, use the diffusion vacuum pump for the first time. I made a video about it um, in the past where I explained how diffusion vacuum pumps work. They are vacuum pumps which work without any moving parts at all. They have no mechanical parts uh, inside. So I just thought I would try today because thanks to my awesome Patreons I was able to afford some diffusion um, vacuum pump oil. It's called Deconol uh, D705. It has a vapor pressure of 10 to the power of minus 10 millibars. And I couldn't test it um, earlier because I just had to wait um, until I could buy this oil. It is just a specialized silicon oil. And if you don't know how these pumps work, I recommend you watch the video I made about the principle of these pumps. And today I'm going to try and use it the first time. If you're asking yourself why my cloud chamber or part of my cloud chamber is on the workbench as well, I'm planning on using the cooling cycle, which are just two, I think, um, 240 millimeter radiators. Um, from a water cooling system, one on this side and one on the other side. And I'm using it to cool the diffusion pump. It has a cooling mantle at the bottom here to condense the oil. And it also has a second cooling cycle on top here at the baffle to condense any oil vapors that might get up there. And I will just test if, it's, uh, if the um, two radiators are able to remove the heat from the system sufficiently. So, the first thing I will do is to install the stack here. I didn't do it now uh, until this point, and then we'll see. Here you can see the baffle, which is used to condense any oil vapors which travel up the pump body. I will now use some diffusion um, vacuum pump oil and according to the notes of the previous owner this pump uses 15 to 30 milliliters of oil so I'm just going to use 25 milliliters. And I'm just going to fill the oil in the pump body and insert the jet assembly stack or also called Christmas tree and the oil vapors will travel, they will be heated by the heater at the bottom, they will vaporize, travel through this stack, be redirected by these cups you see here, these three uh, cups which are three compression stages and will be redirected down where they transfer their impulse to the um, gas molecules still in the system and carry them down to the four-line pump where they can be evacuated. As you notice, I didn't bother to clean the pump or use gloves. I just want to see if everything works and if there are any problems with the system. So it's not uh, like I'm building a proper clean high vacuum system right now. What I noticed is that some of my older vacuum equipment uses special K40 um, centering rings. As you can see for comparison, this is a standard K40 um, O-ring and centering ring. And this is the one this flange here uses. And as you can see the inner diameter of the small lip on the centering ring is way smaller. So this one won't even fit here. So if any of you know what this type is called or why it is used, it is also used at the bottom here. I luckily had a small one with um, the smaller centering ring. I know that some of you, for example Spirit watches some of my videos, are way more experienced in vacuum systems than I am. So if you know what these centering rings are called, I would appreciate if you let me know. So maybe I can buy some if I need them. And I have decided to use my old ionization vacuum gauge for the high vacuum measurements because I don't risk I don't want to risk my 
uh, damaging my new one I got from Whistle Vacuum. Again, thank you a lot for this. And yeah, that's why I'm using the old one. But I verified that the readings are quite reliable with the other gauge. So everything is set up. As you can see, I have two vacuum gauges at my diffusion pump. One is a Pirani gauge, um, which will measure the rough vacuum to be sure that I'm safe to turn on the ionization gauge and my diffusion pump. The ionization gauge is for the high vacuum measurements and I'm going to use my DIY vacuum gauge controller down here to read out the Pirani gauge and the ionization gauge controller for the ionization gauge. If you're interested in how I built this vacuum gauge controller myself, there is a video about it. And I'm using the roughing pump to pump down the inside of the diffusion pump and the teeny tiny vacuum chamber on top here. The roughing pump is connected on the side to the diffusion pump right here. This is necessary because diffusion pumps only work at a already applied vacuum and they just lower the pressure even more. If they are turned on at atmospheric pressure, the oil inside will probably catch fire or at least ruin your vacuum system because the oil will boil over and get everywhere. And as you can see, the cooling water right here is supplied by my cloud chamber um, cooling system. It goes in the cooling mantle of the diffusion pump right here, which provides cooling for the oil vapor to condense, then it travels up here to the second baffle on top here, which will condense any vapor which uh, managed to escape the main pump body, and then it flows back right here to my two radiators and it cycles through. If this works, I plan on building a dedicated vacuum pump stand for my diffusion pump with the radiators included. It would look similar to this um, uh, cloud chamber right here, but with a diffusion pump installed in the middle where I can just connect my vacuum system. So I'm going to turn on the rotary vane pump to pump down the system and I will try to keep this upright. Um, I will probably screw it down even more or put the pump body um, on the desk here. Ah, in case you're wondering, I installed the heating element. It was disconnected and measured the resistance and everything seemed to look okay. So let's hope it is okay. After the rotary vane pump has been running for about half an hour, you can see that the pressure is dropping almost insignificantly. And I'm going to turn on the diffusion vacuum pump now, and we will see what happens to the pressure. I have now turned on the heater of the diffusion vacuum pump, and I expect the pressure inside the vacuum system to rise as the oil heats up and some gases are driven out of the solution in the oil. We will see if that happens and then, oh yeah, we, we can see it happening right now, I think. And then Let's hope the pressure drops again. I have now turned on the ionization gauge and it seems like my Pirani vacuum gauge just bottomed out and can't measure any lower pressures. So we will now use the ionization gauge to monitor the pressure in the system. Up until this point we are now at around 6.2 uh, to the power of minus 5 Tor and at this point the cooling system of my um, cloud chamber seems to be holding up great. The water isn't even warm to the touch. So it seems like this system is sufficient to cool the cooling mantle of my diffusion pump. We are now at 2.8 or 2.7 times 10 to the power of minus 5 Tor and the pressure is still falling, but I will stop now. I just wanted to show you um, the diffusion pump in action and I will probably have a project in the future where I will use it. It maybe even has to do something with cesium and thank you a lot for watching this video.
I hope you have a great time. I hope you had a great Christmas and a great start in the new year. And again, thank you to my patrons who made it possible for me to purchase the oil for the diffusion pump.